Did you ever wonder what happened to Dirk Benedict, the popular star of such fan favorites as Battlestar Galactica, Charlie's Angels, The A-Team, and S seems to have disappeared from the limelight? At the height of his fame, he was one of the more popular actors in Hollywood. In this video, we'll cover his career, his rise to fame, and the shocking reason he's no longer prominent in Hollywood. Dirk Benedict's Real Name Dirk Benedict was born Dirk Nywoner in 1945 in Helena, Montana, to Priscilla Mella, an accountant, and George Nywoner, a lawyer. He grew up predominantly in White Sulphur Springs, Montana. His parents were divorced by the time he was 16, and at 18, his father passed away. There's a story that he changed his name after being served Eggs Benedict right before a theater performance, and for whatever reason, the name stuck. Dirk went to Whitman College, where he studied music and played football. He was a typical all-American male, weighing in at 200 pounds. He graduated from Whitman in 1967. Initially, he performed there in repertory theater. Eventually, he moved on from that to star on Broadway. His first Broadway play was Abelard and Eloise, starring Diana Rigg and Keith Michael. It ran in Los Angeles at the Amundsen Theater for a six-week pre-Broadway tryout. He was 22 at the time. In 1969, he was supposed to join the military, but was disqualified from it from a head injury he'd received playing football. His Broadway roles also included a part in a 1972 production of Butterflies Are Free. From Broadway, he moved on to television and film. His first role in film was in one called Georgia, Georgia. He was then offered an extended run of Butterflies Are Free in Hawaii. While there, he scored a guest role on Hawaii 5 the producers of the 1973 film S A New Movie saw his performance and cast him. Dirk starred as a man undergoing a painful transformation from man to snake. By the end of the film, Dirk is full-on wrestling a mongoose, though this scene was ultimately cut. Other film and TV roles during this time include the role of a wife-beating husband opposite Twiggy in the film W, which was her American debut, as well as roles in the Charlie's Angels series Chopper 1 and the Donnie and Marie Variety Show. Dirk Benedict's Tragic Diagnosis Things took a turn for the worse in 1974 when Benedict, only 29 at the time, was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He rejected traditional treatments, choosing instead to fight the cancer by moving to a secluded cottage and adopting a macrobiotic diet, consisting only of white meat fish, whole grains, and certain vegetables. Actress Gloria Swanson and her husband William Duffy introduced Dirk to Michio Kushi, a macrobiotics expert in Boston. Kushi was the leading macrobiotic diagnostician in the U.S. For thousands of people suffering from cancer, this man was a prophet and their last hope. When Dirk first met Kushi, he didn't buy into his philosophies. However, after being disappointed with the medical advice he was being given, he wound up at Kushi's doorstep. As a result of the diet Kushi prescribed, Dirk lost 60 pounds, becoming a shell of his former self. He went down to a shockingly low 135 pounds. When he went to visit his mother and sister during this time, both of them were scared because of his appearance. Dirk's effort proved successful, though, and after several years fighting his illness, he finally put weight back on and was ready to get back out there. He got a clean bill of health from his doctor, Dr. Block, and was told he didn't have a tumor anymore. He still maintains a healthy diet, eating about 60% grains, 25% beans, and the other 15% is side dishes like nuts, seeds, fruit, and fish. He does recognize, though, that there's really no such thing as being cured. His cancer could come back, which is why it's important to continue to eat and live healthy. After he learned he was free of his tumor, he returned to the business of being an actor. Dirk Benedict bounces back. He came to stay in Los Angeles to attempt to get back into the swing of things and pick up his career. His former agent and manager somehow didn't even know he had gone. While he was staying with Gloria Swanson and Bill Duffy, he took a general meeting with Glenn Larson. Glenn at the time was in the middle of prepping a major sci-fi project for Universal and ABC, which promised to be like nothing that had been on TV before. That project was Battlestar Galactica, on which Dirk would star as Lieutenant Starbuck. Starbuck was a cigar-smoking womanizer who also had the reputation of being a great pilot and a brutal warrior. He was a fan favorite on the show. After he left, they recast the role of Starbuck with a female actress, which Dirk wasn't a fan of. He thought she should have been a new character rather than taking over as Starbuck. He felt a sense of ownership over the legendary character he'd created. The same year he landed a role on Battlestar, he also starred in the TV film Cruise into Terror. 
A year later, he appeared in an ensemble film called Scavenger Hunt. A few years after that, he landed the role of Face Peck in The A-Team. This would be Dirk's last major role for a while. He found working on The A-Team didn't make him terribly happy and needed to, quote, be balanced by some good, honest airplane scrubbing. Since then, Dirk has only worked sporadically in film, television, and theater. He has, however, authored two books, his memoir, Confessions of a Kamikaze Cowboy, and the other, an autobiography, And Then We Went Fishing. He also wrote his own one-man show. In the early 2000s, Dirk also directed and wrote the indie drama Cahoots. Why You Don't See Dirk Benedict Anymore So, was it cancer that derailed his career? Possibly. There's also speculation his career went downhill because Hollywood can't stand an original thinker. Dirk felt like Hollywood ostracized him because of his different way of thinking. He even said, to be creative is a risk with the possibility of failure. This makes Hollywood nervous. Dirk commented anytime he would talk about things like character, story, and originality, people wanted to throw him out of the room. Dirk even confesses that while he wanted to act, he didn't necessarily want to be a movie star. The real reason might have something to do with fatherhood. As the A-Team was winding down in 1986, Dirk met and married Tony Hudson. They had two sons together, George and Roland. Dirk is an outstanding and caring father. He describes himself as Mr. Mom. By the time his sons were in their teens, Dirk was basically raising them as a single father following Tony and his divorce in 1995. In 1998, he discovered he has a third son, John Talbert, from a previous relationship. Talbert, who was 30 by the time he met his father, was born in 1968 and put up for adoption without Dirk's knowledge. With the help of his adoptive parents, John found and met both of his biological parents. Dirk was surprised and thrilled to meet him. Dirk has had people say he's sacrificing his life for his sons, but he doesn't see it that way. He, George, and Roland lived in Big Fork, Montana, and the boys would visit their mother in L.A. for a few weeks every year. All three of his sons even joined him on a cruise designed to let fans have their moment with Dirk, a cruise they repeated a few times. While Benedict has never given up on his dreams of being an actor and making movies, his family comes first. His sons are his best friends, and he says fatherhood deepens you. He said that cooking and raising children are the two highest art forms. Dirk says he's experienced and overcome a lot in his life, including thinning hair, arthritis, acne, lower back pain, impotence, weight problems, excessive drinking problems, and of course, cancer. Fatherhood, however, is his greatest triumph. Besides being an actor, he's also a private pilot and cigar connoisseur. He's still alive and thriving happily with his sons. So while Dirk's career might not be as thriving as it once was, it might be for a few very good reasons, including his health, his disdain for Hollywood's lack of originality, and his dedication to being a father. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a big Dirk Benedict fan? Comment down below and tell us your favorite of his roles. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.